Greetings. This is the Shelton Bumgarner Show. We have a special guest uh, this evening, and that's why I started it an hour early. It will be for approximately one hour. Uh, one hour. The beautiful and talented Elisa Jordana, uh, <laughs> which I, who I think looks much better on Blab than she does on Streetcast. You look. What? You it looks. You look stunning here on uh, on uh, Blab. The you, oh you really, my god! It really Is makes you look. Me? Yes, you look great. You look. Uh, you, I should you, change to blab just for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, so uh, for those like uh, this is an example of where I I don't. Uh, she looks stunning in both places, yes, but I I think she's even, <laughs> she looks even better here on blab. That's kind of uh, depressing, Shelton. That I've been looking worse for all these months. <laughs> no, no, it's just I think the the video quality is better on blab. That's all. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, anyway, for uh, for those of you who do not know um, who Elisa Jordana is, I I have to say this is an example of I I, I honestly uh, am I'm learning I'll be learning just as much as you guys are during the course of this evening because uh, uh, I, I zero preparation and I'm just <laughs> I'm just gonna ask some questions. So Elisa <laughs> Jordana, uh, if you do not know, uh, she has a show on Spreecast which is quite popular. It's called Kermit and Friends, and Kermit is not Kermit the Frog. Kermit is a young uh, little animal. Uh, what kind of dog is Kermit? Kermit is a uh, half Chihuahua and half Yorkie. Okay, half Chihuahua, half Yorkie. And occasionally, yeah. he uh, it's a he, correct? She. It's a she. Oh, it's a she. Yeah. Occasionally, she will be in Elisa Jordana's lap, and she will... Uh, it's quite cute. It's quite a little cute little animal. Uh, and... Uh, and so, Alisa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I, I saw just the very, very beginning of a show that you did with Howard Stern. Uh, and so tell us uh, not only your connection to Howard Stern, but also uh, your connection to Cobra Starship. Oh, okay. Um, sure. Uh, well, I used to do a lot of songwriting and music. I've been playing keyboard and piano ever since I was like four years old. So I've been very, very into music um, for a very long time. And I tried and tried and tried and tried to get into the business. And then one day when I wasn't trying, I met another musician and he uh, asked me to be in his band. And then like two weeks later, we were on the Jimmy Kimmel show performing in front of millions of people. And uh, so that's how I got in. It was very easy to get in after a lot of years of trying really hard. Um, I toured with that band for a while and that was really fun. And then I I don't know what happened. I, I just couldn't, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't really know them that well. I was very like awkward and nervous to be around a lot of guys. We were in a tour bus and they were all like kind of like making fun of me. <laughs> they were, uh, you know, making fun of me, making little jokes. It was before I knew how to tell jokes back. Okay. If I would have been like that more the way I am now, it would have been a lot better for me, but I didn't, I didn't like being teased and I was teased a lot. So I stopped being in that band and then I started doing uh, a solo career and I moved to California. I was in a few reality shows. I did some music. I had a good fan base. It's very similar to what I'm doing now actually. And where I talk to my fans and I uh, you know, have a dialogue with them where they tell me how I'm doing. And it was very uh, much online. I did play uh, live at, you know, concert venues and things like that, which I really enjoy. And I wish I was doing that now, but, uh, I did that. And then, um, let's see, I met Benji in. Yes. Two Tell us about yeah. Benji and you and your connection. Yeah. Benji Bronx, as I understand, that's his last name. Benji Bronx is a stage name. Benji Bronx is a writer for, for what? It's not his stage name. Oh, that's his real name. Okay. I, th yeah. I, th I thought when I saw the Howard Stern yeah. show, I remember Howard was picking on ben Benji for using, <laughs> using some other names for his various and sundry wide range of dating services that he that he was using. That's how he met you, right? Yes. He, met, he met you on J Date or something like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was on J Date for. Oh, we lost her. Oh, <laughs> maybe Benji doesn't want her to. Benji doesn't want her to explain that. Okay, we lost her. What happened to What happened to Elisa? I lost her. 
Sorry, Shelton. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened. I'm new to Blab. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Is, uh, did I did I touch on something too personal? I'm sorry. No. Was, no. No. no was actually, on the Howard Stern show. No, no. No. Shelton, you didn't. I would never leave, especially a question like that. Um. Okay. So I was on J Date for five years. Uh, you know, trying to meet someone. I was very like lonely, especially in LA. I was so lonely. I met all these like really bad guys. They didn't want anything. They just want to hook up. So I went on uh, online dating. I met like so many people on there. It was crazy. I don't. Have you ever done online dating, Shelton? Uh, just very minor, minor. It hasn't been very successful. And let me let me stress for the record, I'm not asking anything that's not public record. It was on the you Howard Stern show. Anything, Shelton? You can ask the, anything. I, I don't know. Care. I know. I'm just saying for the record, this is public knowledge. <coughs> it's been asked on the Howard Stern show. I'm not being yeah. creepy. Okay, now go. You are not creepy. So you were saying. Okay, so I was saying, I met so many uh, people, you know, on JD. I it wasn't really clicking. Then I met Benji, and it was very nice. I mean, he was very sweet. He was nervous. I was nervous, too. But I don't know. We just clicked. I loved uh, th that he was funny. I think I'm funny. It worked out well with that. I had a lot of ideas for jokes. I would go over my jokes with him. We just clicked. We were very good friends at first. And then he brought me in to the Howard Stern show and I played music on there. That was my first time on there. And uh, I remember uh, before I went on there, I was practicing and my sister came in the room and I said, Allison, please listen to this. Let me know if this is good. And my sister said, don't play on there. Do not play. You should play, uh, if anything, from a CD. <laughs> Do not play live. And I should have listened to her because I think it went really badly. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not good at playing live. That's just something I'm not good at. But I do it over and over and over again. Who knows why? But uh, anyway, so I went on the show. I enjoyed it. I liked, you know, the banter. Uh, I learned a lot. I've been on the show many times since then. Uh, I was like Miss Howard TV. I okay. tried out. Uh, yes. Can you, can you explain? Uh, this is all stuff that – this is all backstory that perhaps – your audience on Spreecast knows about, but we on Blab don't know about. That's why I'm like, I'm not trying to belabor the point, but I'm, I'm, I'm honestly interested in, and want to know a, a little oh. bit about your life. I want to know a little bit about your life. I want to know more about you. Uh, so tell me, and again, uh, Benji, I'm, I'm not asking anything. It's that is, that's not public knowledge. Uh, so tell us about your time as a uh, Howard uh, Stern TV girl, a woman. And what, how did that happen? What does it mean? And what were the benefits? Um, the benefit is just telling you about it right now. That's pretty much the only benefit, Shelton. <laughs> no one ever asks me about it. I didn't get much praise. <laughs> it's it's very uncelebrated position, but I, I had fun. I lost weight for it. I learned how to lose weight quickly. I lost like 20 pounds. It, it, Benji, how long did that take? Like a month? I, I lost like 20 pounds in a month. So I learned about juicing through that. Uh, that was fun. You know, I like talking to people on the air. I like it. I don't, whether it's you or Howard Stern or whoever, like, or, or Corey or Frank, I enjoy it. I like entertaining people. I like the interaction between fans and, you know, entertainers. That's fun for me. So I was Miss Howard Stern. I, you know, I got a lot of, um, you know, people follow me on Twitter. You know, that's why I have like, you know, 25,000 followers because of all my time, you know, on that show probably. So yes, I was Miss Howard TV. I tried out for Howard Stern's band. I got in the band. I'm still in the band technically. They never really let me go. So uh, that was cool. Um, what else did I do? I interviewed Howard Stern, which was really, really scary. But uh, uh, Benji was there. We, we interviewed him together. That was like one of the best days of my life. <laughs> um, I was on like a newlywed game with Benji and every time I was on the show, it was a good experience except for one time. Um, they, they gave me a really big opportunity to audition in front of, uh, Tommy Mottola, who's like, uh, the CEO of like Sony records. And I totally, uh, did a terrible job and that's why I'm not singing and I'm hosting Kermit and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, I feel your pain. Uh, so, uh. <laughs> So uh, tell us, uh, this is another thing that perhaps the, the Spreecast uh, audience knows that we do not know here on Blab. Tell us what's it like working with Howard Stern? Uh, what, what is he like as a person? Is, he, is, is his persona different than his real life? Like, what's it like to hang out with him? And, and like, you know, I'm, I'm just interested. Uh, I mean, I haven't exactly had like, you know, like slumber parties with him, but I, I've met him, you know, many times and uh, he's he's just nice. You know, it's not like you would uh, talk to him and think he's, oh, wow, this guy's like so different than, you know, Shelton. It, in fact, when I think about it, you and him are pretty similar in the fact that um, 
you're both very humble. Uh, Kermit and Friends. One second. I'm mean, sorry, not Kermit and Friends. Shelton and Friends. <laughs> Shelton and Friends. Oh, that was Frank. He hung up. All right, sorry. Uh, I don't know if you want to take phone calls. But yeah, he's just, uh, you know, he's not like super outgoing like you'd think he would be. You would think he'd be like so outgoing, like the life of the party. I've seen him very quiet and just, uh, you know, like kind of like a normal person. And uh, I just can't, I wish I had a story to tell you that, oh, he's like, you know, like dancing on a table or something, but I don't have that. He just, it's kind of like a regular guy. So uh, can you give <laughs> us some, some dynamic of what it's like uh, working with the show? I mean, like it's, is, is the show, is a lot of camaraderie? Is it like, you know, cause like the show sometimes seems a little caustic is like, I really like. I'm really. I'm a big fan of Howard Stern. I'm a huge fan of you Howard Stern. You are. I did not know that. Yes, I, I, I think he, about you. He is a he is a great interviewer. I really think he's one of probably one of the best interviewers around. Because uh, mm -hmm. I've seen him interview some people, and it was really, 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 really good. He, uh, and I'm just curious, what's it like hanging out with that group of people? Let's see. Uh, well, I can just talk about like me specifically. I enjoy. Um, like, are, what do you mean? Like, what is it like? Uh, like, uh, can you guys ask the question again? I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I want to, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, on a practical level, what's mm -hmm. it like hanging out with Howard Stern? But you just asked me that the last question. <laughs> I know, but I guess, I guess I'm, I'm asking yeah. in a different way because, you know, uh, like, you know, what's it like to, to be as a, just a normal human being? Is, is he, is, does he fill up a room when you, when you hang out with him? Does he, I, 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 I I've only met a handful of people in my life that do that, Shelton. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about completely. Um, somebody that when they walk in the room, you feel their energy and it like fills up every space. I know, I totally know what you mean, but it's it's different. It makes it different when the person's already like a huge celebrity, the big like one of the biggest celebrities in the world. So there's already that that everybody's thinking about. So yes, in that way it does. But I've met many people in my life that do that that aren't, um, you know, on that level. Uh, I mean, I've I've met so many people, you know, through touring and you know, being part of Kermit and Friends, even my Kermit and Friends party. I mean, to me, I'm I'm more excited. He's already discovered. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's already discovered. He, you know, he's already already doing very well. I am extremely interested in the person that no one knows. Okay. That. Uh, th that's what excites me. It doesn't excite me so much to meet people that have already, you know, made it. Uh, you know, there's only so many questions you can ask them. Like I've been friends with, you know, people that are well known before, and you know, it's like, oh, how did you get there? I, I haven't heard anything that different. But what, what what I really get, what really like turns me on, is when I meet somebody and there's no other person in the world like them. There's no one. Like you just can't. Like they like. They rock your world. Like, for instance, I mean, I hate to bring this up because a lot of people here don't like him, but Kleenex, okay? Yeah, Kleenex. I have never, he, to me, that guy fills a room. Yeah, That's that, a person that fills a room that no one knows. That's what I'm impressed about. It's easy to go into a room with like Madonna and be like, oh, wow, she fills a room. Because there's already like some kind of like context to it. Uh, we already know Madonna. We already know her songs. We're already nervous being there. But when somebody like Kleenex comes in or Honest Frank or Rhonda the Therapist or you know, some uh, Mark Sweeben uh, or, you know, some someone like that, that no one knows them. They are not famous, but they still fill a room and you can't stop talking about them. Those are the kind of people that turn me on. I'm excited. I cannot wait to talk about them. And that that is that really what gets to me because I've met a lot of famous people in my life. And it's just, I don't know, to me, that's less interesting than finding someone new. Like you, Shelton, like you, for instance, you are very unique. And I know people are very into you and attracted to you because of your sensitivity. Uh, you're very humble. And that's that's what's exciting to me is finding different characters, different colorful characters that, you know, you you would look at their, oh, they have nothing in common with each other. Like, what does Shelton have in common with Honest Frank? Or, like, what does Kleenex have in common with Rhonda? Or, like, why the hell is Douche there? Like, I love, like, boggling people's minds with that. So I did learn from Howard Stern in that uh, – he has discovered many people that are not celebrities. They're not celebrated. They're not, you know, on the top of the charts. They don't have a hit movie, but they could still be loved and cared about. And that's something that he does that I really admire. 
So what what is your vision for Kermit and Friends? Can you tell us a little bit about the background of Kermit and Friends? <laughs> how did it begin? Why you know uh, like how did you start from zero and, and like did you have an established fan base and people said you should do a podcast? How did that happen? Um, well, actually, uh, I had just been, you know, let go from my job and I had broken up with Benji and I was completely alone and depressed. And uh, I was I'm a big fan of The Bachelor and The Bachelor has the, these spoilers that are on spreecast. And I I'm very into it. This guy, his, his name is Reality Steve. He has a blog and a show on spreecast. So I clicked on it and I was watching and I was like, wow, this is great. It's an interactive show. Uh, the fans can be a part of the show. And I've always loved like fan interaction, like my whole life, like when I was in my band and, you know, when I was on Howard Stern, I love fan interaction. I love talking to the fans. That's a really great part of it for me. So I was watching this guy's show and I was thinking, wow, this is really cool. This guy, he, like they, you know, he's got these fans and they're talking to him. They're telling him kind of what to do and, and he's doing it and they're, they're loving it. And there wasn't like any haters for his show, but that's also an interesting aspect of my show. But anyway, so I started that first day and I was watching uh, Reality Steve and I saw there was a little button and it said, start your own spreecast. And I clicked on it. I clicked on the button and there was nobody there. It was just me, Shelton. It was just me all alone. So I was talking to myself, but Kermit was there and Benji was in the back, like doing something else. Kermit was there and I was just like, hey, everybody, welcome to Kermit and Friends. Uh, is this on? And the first person to show up was uh, Jeff Fleur, which is who is like the, the CEO of uh, Spreecast. But I didn't know that's who it was at the time. I just thought, oh, this is like a nice guy that is helping me out. But he ended up being very instrumental in me starting my own show there because he was really encouraging. And that's what I say to people that come on my show is like, all it takes is one person to believe in you and to tell you you can do something because that's what he was to me. He kept saying, oh, you're so good. You're good. This is a good show. I like watching your show. I'm watching every show that you do. And he was there watching and sometimes participating. And that really helped me uh, to keep going and think, oh, I'm not just doing this for nothing. So each day it got, uh, you know, bigger and bigger. And, you know, there's, there's two people, then there's three people, then there's four people, then there's five people. And then people started helping in other ways. Uh, people started doing photoshops for me and they started doing uh, recaps. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. The whole community, uh, you know, a lot of Howard Stern fans, but also uh, people just from Spreecast and just random people that somehow found us started stepping up and being a part of it. And I said, wow, this is really cool that people that are watching, people that don't know know me at all are like helping build the show with me. And I thought that was, I always thought that was a beautiful thing. And I was really excited by it. Now, can you tell us about when, when was that? When did it start? Um, I think <laughs> it was either last February or March. I'm not exactly sure. February 16th. And so you started, okay, February 16th. So you started from zero and, and now you're a hundred. You started at the bottom, now you're yes, here. Yes. Uh, so, so, uh, so what's your vision for the show going forward? Like, uh, where do you see it in five years? Like, do you, do you think that you can leverage it to, to, uh, to bigger and better things or, you know, or what? Well, um, okay. So what excites me, like a lot of people say, cause my numbers have been up and down, you know, uh, I've had 30,000 people watch the replay. I've had, uh, you know, 2000 people watch the replay. So I've been at like all kinds of numbers. Uh, I've had you know, two live viewers and I've had 300 live viewers. So it's been up and down. So I don't really go by numbers. What I go by more is what's happening on the show and how excited I personally am by it. So let me explain. Uh, there's times on the show where it's just all nice and, you know, we're just talking about our day. But the, the moment that I'm waiting for is for two people, <coughs> sorry, that have nothing in common coming together and creating something beautiful that gets the audience involved. So, you know, I have, I have Shelton here who, you know, went through a tremendous loss today. And then I have, you know, my fan, Nick Presto, you know, that we just lost and like us relating on that, that to me is so beautiful and how we can make each other feel better and, and, and improve each other's lives. And I think about you even when I'm not doing my show. You know, I think about you. I, I laugh sometimes. I think, oh, my God, Shelton, I wonder if he's eating a Hot Pocket right now. Probably. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, people making me smile, people uh, watching the fans on Twitter interact with each other, talking about the show. It's really, uh, really nice to see people working on the show, caring about it, uh, having it be a place of reference, 
you know, there's somebody on the other side of the world or the other side of the country that you could be talking to about Honest Frank or one of the stars on Kermit and Friends, and you could be laughing together about that. And that to me is what the show is about. And that's what excites me. It's like, who am I going to meet next? That's going to change my life forever. There's people on Kermit and Friends that have come on the show that have literally changed my mind about things, changed the way I think about things and have given me advice and have, you know, fought. And I learned from that. Like I like something I learned in a fight is talk less. OK, I used to always uh, when I fight with people, you know, try to jump on top of them and say more and like, you know, just try to get the last word in and everything. And from being on Kermit and Friends, you just let them go. If you just let somebody go, uh, you know, usually they'll reveal themselves and it's just a matter of time. I learned that uh, sometimes I would suspect something about a person that come on my show and I think, you know, should I tell everyone about this? Should, I mean, it's very it, it's very hard not to do that because sometimes it's, it's exciting, but uh, people reveal who they truly are. It's just a matter of time. And that has happened on Kermit and Friends. And I think we have a really, really good group. And I'm just looking forward uh, to expanding more, getting more people involved, getting more people caring about the show, and uh, just meeting new friends. So, uh, as anyone can attest, any who doesn't know and who doesn't know the show very well, <laughs> yeah. Herman and Friends is unique. Yes. How would you explain the philosophy of the show to someone who does not know about it? Okay. Uh, it's, it's not, it's, there's a learning curve to say the least. Can you, can you explain how the show is the philosophy of the show to an outsider, say someone on blab who is more familiar with people just sitting around and chatting about their day, as opposed to the, uh, for some time, I mean, legitimately you could call it something of a blood sport. Uh, that happens on Kermit and friends. Okay. Absolutely. I would say to people of blab, if you're considering coming on Kermit and Friends, I will welcome you. I am happy to meet new people. Uh, what it's about is we're a show about ourselves, okay? So I am the host of the show. I come on every day. I say, you know, a monologue about what's going on in my life. I try to be as open as possible so that the people that are coming on the show are as open as they, as they can be, much like you are, Shelton, today. And it is a risk coming on the show. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a risk, okay? Because when you come on the show and you're open and honest like Shelton is or like Kleenex was or some of our other stars, you could, yes, you definitely could get make, made fun of. Not by me, but by our audience. Um, you know, you you will have some like small level of fame. A lot of people know, you know, with thousands of people watch every day. So it's it'll be new for you. And some people cannot handle it. They, they can't. They go crazy. And I know that sounds really weird, but they they go nuts. Um, so there's that risk. But any time in life that you put yourself out there, whether it be on a date or, you know, at your job or with a friend, you know, I've told friends things many times that they held against me at the end. OK, that is life. So I would say the reward for coming on Kermit and Friends is way, way larger than the risk. The reward you will get by coming on the show is meeting all these people, these interesting, amazing people that we have gathered that are just incredible and different and unique and talented. And you get to meet these people and they get to know you and they get to really care about you. And when, once you open yourself up to someone, it's like so like beautiful. I've seen it. I've seen it so much. People get close through the show. Somebody that you would have never met in a million years uh, just because, you know, you like the same show and you're you're interactive with it and you're you're helping it out and you're creating new shows and people that are scared to come on camera. I, I really, really don't think you should be because I, I I just think that's life. Like when people get so upset by, you know, someone in chat saying uh, some kind of negative comment. I mean, that is life. Life is tough. Not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to like you. Trust me, in, in high school, no one liked me, okay? Now a couple people like me, I'm happy. <laughs> so it, odds are more people are going to like you than not, and you'll be stronger for it. You'll enjoy the new fans that you make on Twitter and Facebook. People will be constantly talking to you, and it's fun. Why not? I mean, what else are you doing? I, you know, it's more fun than Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that uh, I definitely – 
was prepared. I mean, I only because I have been prepared by some of the the haters, as they call them, uh, on Blab. Oh, we lost Alisa again. Alisa, where'd you go? Oh, what? Okay, where? Why is Alisa? Sorry, I don't know okay. what's going on. Okay. <laughs> anyway, only because of the haters on Blab, am I uh, was I prepared for <laughs> prepared for Kermit and Friends? Because uh, once you, once you've been grilled about what exactly is in the boxes in the back, right? Uh, then you can you can once you have to say okay, yes, I have boxes in my background. Then you can handle uh, people commenting on uh, on your background. On so uh, that you mentioned, you touched on an interesting point. Uh, you said you you have problems with people coming on camera. Like, is that an is that an issue that yes. you have that people won't come on? Okay, explain that to me. Explain that because that seems like something you, that you have a problem with. Explain that to well, to the people audience. are so afraid to come on camera that they just don't come on. And the main way you can help the show is by coming on because it's all about the relationships of the people within the show. If you don't come on camera, then nobody gets to know you and nobody really cares. So I think that it's really important for people to let their fears, you know, let their fears go and just take a risk. And I will take care of you. I think I've taken good care of you, Shelton. I think. I don't know. But um, I try to make my guests feel comfortable and happy. And I get so excited uh, you know, when they get success out of the show, I was really happy. Uh, one of our first stars, we don't have him any longer. We lost him to blab, but one of our first stars, Mark Zwieben, uh, he got recognized at Penn station. Uh, Ryan got recognized, Ryan Lever. He's gotten recognized before Kleenex has gotten recognized. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel's a fan of, uh, of, uh, Mark Zwieben from the show and spoke about him. And, and many celebrities are, uh, very into Carmen and friends and have spoken about the different characters. Uh, Rhonda has been brought up. And it's just really cool. I mean, it's 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 it feels good to have somebody say, "Oh, I love this show," or "Oh, I love Mark Sweeben," or "Oh, I miss this person," or or be attached to anyone because it's just it just feels it feels nice to have people that weren't celebrated in this kind of way before celebrated because uh, it, it's for whatever reason it just makes people feel very connected to the world to have fans, and I've seen it over and over again. So uh, one of the questions is, what kind of people do you look for uh, for your show? Uh, what, like what, like because I, I, as I can attest, there is a very unique uh, group of people that are participate uh, in the show. And I and I, and not to be sexist, but Elisa, when you smile, you glow. Uh, you see, you, 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 uh, when you when you smile, you you, look, you light up a room. Okay. Uh, uh, so what kind of people uh, do you look for for the open show? people? People that are not afraid to say how they're feeling. I, I, I've noticed something where sometimes people are like really like afraid to let us know who they really are. And they like lie. I don't mind lying that much. I just being, um, I mean, I prefer not lying, but being uh, emotionally honest is very important. Not so much like details. Like I don't care really where you work or details like that, where you went to school. A lot of people are hung up on those details. I'm more interested in how you feel. Uh, you know, are you sad today? What what hurts you? What makes you happy? What uh, you know, what are you looking for? What makes you tick? Um, how do different people interact? I've noticed that a lot of times people will interact um a way towards a certain person uh that they're threatened by. Okay, so I see that a lot. Or somebody somebody that they see themselves in. I, I notice that a lot that somebody will pick a fight with someone for the same exact reason why uh, they get in fights, you know, why they get picked on. And I see that a lot, actually. It's, it's kind of funny. Like people will call um, someone an attention whore when they're an attention whore themselves or call somebody stupid when they've been called stupid. And it's just a very um, interesting way to study social dynamics also, uh, which I am thrilled by because I'm so interested in that. But uh, I'm looking for all kinds of people. I'm looking for you know, nice people, mean people, crazy people, sane people, uh, people that are passionate about something, people that have a lot to say, people that are shy, try to uh, bring people out of that. Because I was once a very shy person and Kerman friends has helped me so much with that. And uh, it continues to help to help me. The most fun I've ever had at a party was a Kerman friends party that I had uh, the first one. So I was like, wow, this is a party I actually want to be at most of the time. I hate. Parties. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
Alisa, tell us. Uh, you mentioned uh, previously on your own show, uh, where you were <laughs> graciously were gracious enough to ex accept uh, my invitation to come to my show. You said that you were had been a model. Can you explain? Can you talk about a little bit about being a model? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, like you said, you had an opportunity to be a, a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah. Explain to us the model life and what you've done as a model. Okay. Uh, um, so this is a long time ago, Shelton. <laughs> Please, I don't want to. Be... <laughs> it's still, it's still interesting. Okay, this is like a long time ago because I, I, uh, <laughs> I feel weird talking about it because I feel like people are going to click on without hearing me say it's a long time ago and be like, "What the hell is she talking about? She's delusional." Uh, when I was uh, when I first moved to New York when I was eighteen, uh, I believe the first magazine I was in was FHM magazine. Then okay. I was in like Maxim magazine. All I, I call it like the short girl magazines because you, you, you it doesn't matter how tall you are. <laughs> I'm five six, but usually models have to be like five ten. So you know these like sexy type magazines. It doesn't matter how tall you are. So they put me in all those stuff magazine. Um, what other? I, I was in like the, I was in like a lot of catalogs and I was in commercials. And uh, I'm trying to think what else would be impressive. I'm not thinking. Oh, I, <laughs> I was on like the E Show. I think I told you that. Uh, yeah, explain. Uh, yeah, when you're done talking about being a model, like talk about being with E. That sounds like my. my, my so I, I got to travel to different islands. Um, I was like interviewing people. Uh, it was pretty fun. I, I didn't interview people the way I do today, though. I changed a lot. I'm so glad that I'm better now. Because <laughs> I was. I was can, you, can you can you explain? Explain that, please. Explain how your interview style has changed. Well, I wasn't an interviewer before, and I'm an interviewer now. <laughs> okay what what does that mean? What does um, that mean? Let's see. So now I think I put more thought into it and I care more about the other person. So when I have somebody on my show, when I have somebody on Kermit and Friends, I really, really want to get to the bottom of what somebody's about. So like, what is the essence of Shelton? Like I want people, everyone to see Shelton for who he is, not the superficial things, you know, not like the bookstore or not like, you know, you being famous in Korea, but like, who is Shelton? I think we found out today on Carmen and Friends that Shelton is an emotional guy that cares about people and is sensitive and has had heartbreak. Those are the qualities that are interesting to me. That's what I want to know about Shelton, because we have all been through that heartbreak, but a lot of us are afraid to talk about it. I've been really afraid on my show to open up. People have come on and interviewed me and I've just started crying and crying and crying. And, you know, Shelton, I just admire you because you're able to put yourself out there in a way that I am afraid to. That's very kind of you, uh, Alisa. Okay. But I, I, I think I think that you, you sell, your, sell yourself short. I think that you you you, you have a, a great personality and you uh, you do a good job yeah. with the current friends. Thank you. Uh, and uh it's it's a very interesting experience. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm trying to. So, uh, do you think you could ever bring your show over to Blab? Is that something that you might consider doing, uh, or 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 is the or is it not feature rich enough for you to be? Well, able to now do that it? people are telling me I look better on Blab, I'm definitely considering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that that does um, help a little bit. Uh, the reason why I'm at Spreecast and not and not Blab is because I really love the chat. I think the chat adds a lot to the show, and um, so the Spreecast chat saves the whole thing. So I could see everything that people are oh, writing, okay, okay, okay. and it really adds a lot. And to feature certain comments that people make, I think it's really important, and it makes it different from everywhere else where even the people that are afraid, the people in chat that are afraid to come on camera, they can be stars too. They can be stars too. They can be comedy writers. They could be stars. They could change where the show goes. I might be talking about something and then somebody says something in chat and I change the whole thing. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know what? That's more insightful. Um, that's more insightful than something I could have thought of. I have some people in my chat that are brilliant, that are absolutely brilliant. Um, I've had people write jokes you know, I, I worked uh, as a writer on Howard Stern, you know, and, I, and I, I'm familiar with good jokes from, you know, just from that, watching people write. I've seen people that could be, uh, you know, writers, professional writers on my show, uh, you know, writing jokes or just observations. And I've been so impressed with that, Shelton, that um, I, I wouldn't want to lose that. I, I love Blab and I want to definitely, you know, promote my show. And, and you you know, you are so special. I would follow you anywhere. So, you know, wherever you're at, I'm going to go. Alisa, uh, you're being, you're being, you're being very kind. Uh, 
Uh, I'm I'm just a guy that likes to talk. Yeah. Well, I uh, like you. Um, you're emotionally available. Uh, rare for a man. Very rare. And so that's why, you know what? I'm going to go where you are. All right, let's see these questions. Superstar host of the douche. Oh, <laughs> douche is promoting himself. Okay, douche, no problem. Douche is uh, one of the stars of Kerman Friends, in case uh, anybody's curious. Okay, uh, I'll ask you a few, a few more questions, and then I will, I will leave you because I, I know you're busy. I think we should also um, – let me – I, I want to be in charge of who okay. comes on, but I, th I think we okay. should have, um, oh, look, douche is there. He's so cute. Okay. Um, I think also besides uh, you asking me some questions, I think maybe we should take questions from the audience too. Okay. That's fine. So, okay. So what, what are your questions? <laughs> <laughs> or we're waiting, we're waiting for, uh, for what? Well, apparently, I, apparently there's some sort of uh, some sort of uh, video going on here. Uh, I don't know. Is as will there be questions from from douche? No, or are we just going to watch it. I don't think so. I think okay. So I think I opened the seat. So if someone wants to ask a question, I'm gonna. Okay, so you're okay. Okay, and also uh, you you can you can hit the there's an answer to the question. You can hit that, and that will open that will open like if there's a question that you want to answer, that will put that in the. Okay, box. I'm gonna answer this question. Um. Okay. So Ryan, Ryan yeah, G asked, why does your avatar have people who no longer associate with you? Really good question. Okay. So when I started, <laughs> when I started my show, um, mostly it was fans of, um, Howard Stern that were, you know, coming on and they were, you know, super, super fans. Cause to be a fan of me, you have to be a really big fan of Howard Stern. So, um, so those people that originally joined my show, uh, most of them are not a part of it anymore. Uh, the picture that this person is speaking of has um, a friend named Mark, who was one of the original cast members. He had been trolled so badly that he was forced to leave the show. People told him that I hated him, that I was using him, that I was fooling him into like being in love with me or something. So the problem with that was I did love this guy. I wasn't in love with him, but I had love for him. But the people that were like trolling him, telling him that I hated him, telling him that I was, uh, they called his family and said this like bad woman is, you know, taking advantage of you. The trolls got to him and that happens a lot, but you just have to kind of let it go. Uh, you know, I was sad to lose him. I thought he was a great member of the cast. I thought he was a strong personality, really, really strong. I was really sad to lose him. But if I spent all my time chasing trolls away, Shelton, I would not have time to eat or put on makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Alisa, uh, uh, I have to ask, I have to ask, what do you think, what is the draw of the trolls to you? What, why do trolls seem to, I mean, you yourself have called yourself a troll. Right. Well, I uh, looked up troll recently. I actually didn't know what a troll was uh, till I started my show. And I looked up a troll and it's someone that wants attention. Okay. We all want attention, but some people, they take it too far and they're trying to get negative attention and they're trying to hurt things. I want to be around people that want to build something. I am interested in people that are starting a show. Shelton, you interview people. You seem to be very positive. You're not interested in taking people down. You don't spend your time on the internet, you know, prank calling people or, or ruining things or like flashing people or, 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 or um, you know, getting rid of YouTube channels or hurting uh, people's careers. That's not on your plate at all. So I respect that in you. There's people that make their life about this. There's people that spend their whole life trying to take people down, ruin their opportunities and, and, and hurt and hurt them. And I just hate that the trolls can get to me because I'm easy to get. I'm easy to get. I'm out there every day interacting with people. You could type things in the chat. I'll see it. Usually, you know, if you're a fan of like Taylor Swift or something, uh, it's very hard to get her to notice you. If you're a fan of me, I'm on a much smaller level. You, can, I'll notice you. If you tweet me, I'll probably see it unless I have you blocked. So I'm an easy person to get to. You know, they've heard me on the radio or seen me on like a TV show or something. And they see. Ow! Spider monkey. Yeah, 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 spider monkey. Later, 
Okay, that's fine. Uh, 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 thank you. Uh, that's that's the price you paid for for <laughs> to get <laughs> to get to get to, to get the big stars. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, I, I have to say, uh, Lisa, yes. that uh, for those of you who may or may not know, there's there's a young lady named uh, Elise. Yes. Uh, and and I, I have to say that uh, that you and you like you. Uh, I think that you and I have a similar uh, dynamic to, to Elise uh, and I. I think that we work well together. Uh, there's a dynamic that people. I think I, I think it would appeal to some people because uh, you have you, you. I think under the right circumstances, you probably would pick on me just as much as she does. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, so uh, uh, if you want to, uh, I'm going to uh, wrap this up a little bit. Oh, I want to uh, take a question and, from somebody. Okay, take a question from somebody. <laughs> Okay, so what we need we need uh, at least one person to uh, jump in. I want and somebody then we will to jump in, and also um, somebody jump. empty wallet. Yes. <laughs> empty wallet asks is a three day a uh, week permanent thing for now. Uh, just until I've been doing this so long and so much, uh, it's just really tough to do a five uh, day a week show. So Benji is helping me by hosting the two other nights. That's actually been working out. So I don't know if it's permanent. Nothing's really permanent in my mind. Uh, so does someone want to jump? I can't believe that no one wants to jump in right now. It's so weird. No one has a okay, question. Anyway, no one has a question for the beautiful and talented no Lisa. Uh, oh my gosh. No one, one person, one person jump in. Just All right. Nobody just wants for, to jump in. See, this is my problem okay. too on my show, Shelton. That's why I can only do three days a week or five days a week because uh, I have a problem getting people to come on, but I don't have a problem with people saying comments. So let me just answer this question. Lisa, tell people about the dramatic arc and how people are set up to their demise. Thank you, John Mazza, for that question. I know it's you. Uh, so <laughs> I know who that is. Okay, so uh, the dramatic arc is when you have a bunch of people, different personalities uh, together that you know have nothing in common, there is going to be some kind of drama. And I like drama. I'm a big fan of Real Housewives, big fan of The Bachelor. I'm a big fan of uh, Vanderpump Rules. And guess what? There's a lot of drama on there, and they set it up. And, uh, you know, and, and every show, I wouldn't watch a show that has no drama. It's just going to be boring. And I get accused a lot of setting up um, things, people to argue. And I do. I'm going to admit it right here, Shelton. You have the exclusive. I do say <laughs> Wait, It's an exclusive here on, here on, here on the Shelton Longmore show. The, uh, there, there, there is a uh, created drama on. Um, yeah, I on, create the uh, drama because I, I know what's going to happen before it happens. Okay. Uh, if, if I have a, a honest Frank here and I have, I have Corey here, I'm going to put them together. They hate each other. I want to see what goes on. I want to see what they say. It's fun watching them fight. It is. And that's any show people. That's any show on a soap opera. You have to have some conflict. You just have to have it. Uh, it's all, it's all fun and good to interview people and to smile and laugh. But once in a while, a good fight is also entertaining and don't pretend it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay billy the fridge uh this is our one oh, billy. Hi, billy. Hey. How are you? good been, how you doing you've been a guest on karma and friends i remember yeah you. yeah i uh was wondering um <coughs> how often do you allow mentally mental illness to affect the drama of your programs like there was obviously people who have uh i don't i don't i don't want to call anybody out specifically but they have problems and you know they then want to seek out attention like everybody else does and they come on to a blab or a spree cast or wherever and uh, like a lot of people will maybe take advantage of that i don't know uh i don't, I don't want to point any fingers again but uh did you feel that's good for business 
when you exploit the mentally ill? Okay, so the mentally ill, that's a good question. Hmm, let's see. Mentally challenged, mentally ill. All right, so for whatever reason, I mean, all kinds of people are drawn to the show. People that are mentally ill, people that are physically ill. I've noticed that recently as well. Uh, people that are having problems in their life, people that are sad, going through breakups, fired from their job, you know, they don't have a job. Uh, that was me. You know, I, I was I, I was dumped and fired and I was feeling very depressed. So in a way, I was mentally ill and I probably still am. So being that I started the show with a mental illness of being very extremely depressed, OK, very depressed, uh, just looking to talk to someone. I think when you're looking to reach out and connect to someone and talk to someone to feel better. I never think there's harm in that. So if I have someone mentally ill on my show, I'll do my very best to include them, to make them feel good, special. I can't control the trolls. They're uncontrollable. Yeah. I can't control the people in the chat or the people that make fun of them or the people that even prank call their house, but I can control how I treat them. And I'll always make sure to treat people with respect uh, no matter what situation they are in in life. And I, I've thought about what you said many times. I thought, oh God, should I give this person attention uh, because you know they could be make, made fun of? And each time the answer is always the same. Uh, I, I say yes. I say, I wanna celebrate people that are challenged and are not celebrated, that are not beautiful. Uh, people, that, people that are beautiful, people that aren't. There's people that are, are smart on my show, people that are not smart. And I think everybody deserves love and attention and to be celebrated. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think I think it's good to uh, give people that platform because maybe they'll recognize something about themselves that they don't see in their in their mind where they're like locked in that mental illness. And right. even even the trolls, you know, uh, attacking somebody, there's value in that. If, if, right. even if it's even if it's not true <laughs> what the trolls are saying about you to kind of step back and realize that someone would actually like even give you that sort of attention makes you think a little further on where you are in life. So right. I, I think, I think it's uh, cool that you do that. And well, actually, Billy, you know what I've noticed? I think that trolls actually need the most love. I know that sounds crazy. That's, that's why they troll because they don't right. know any other way to get it. And they try and exploit the weaknesses of people and the weakness being that people uh, crave acceptance. You know, we're all tribal creatures and we want to be connected and they attack people who are trying to connect. Yes. They yes. And uh, the trolls, yeah, they want to be loved. They want people to, uh, oh, oh, look at this person. Oh, here I am. Look at me. Um, and that's very challenging. I, 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 it's not easy. Okay. And I'm not perfect at it, but I know that the right thing to do would be give more love to the trolls and don't, you know, don't fight back and just show them that they're appreciated too. And that they're necessary for the show, and they are entertaining sometimes as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Alisa. Yes. Uh, this, this show is about an hour long. Okay. And I'm uh, and I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna pause the recording now. We can continue after this without being recorded, if you wish. Okay. Uh, thank you very, thank you very much for your time. Thank you everyone for your time. I really appreciate, it. Alisa. You're very kind uh, for giving me your time because I know you're a busy woman and it's late. So thank you very much, everyone. Good night.